It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Willing Nellers TV slash radio announcer, sports broadcaster, Isaiah Basinger. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on, Brandon. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you want to get started in working in professional sports? So it basically just came down to I played sports growing up, something I always wanted to do and naturally liked talking about it, liked watching it on TV and thought, you know, give this a try. And I did and really enjoyed it and just continued to roll with it. Of course, what was that like going to Western Liberty to study sports broadcast? Uh, it was a good time. It was close to home and had opportunities for me to get on air right away. So I had the opportunity as a freshman to be able to be a sideline reporter, hopping in the booth every now and then, to doing color commentary, to even eventually towards the end of my sophomore, junior, and senior year, being able to do play-by-play for them and eventually reaching over 100 games play-by-play and color commentary for West Liberty. What were some of the things that you studied while being a sports commentator at West Liberty? So my degree was a general, just broadcasting degree. So learned everything from behind the scenes work to eventually reaching out on my own and learning some more on air stuff, which I always thought was really, really cool. But I also appreciate everything that goes on behind the scenes because without the people behind the scenes, the people that are on air don't look as good as they're supposed to. So really learned that. I also have a minor in public relations. I think that helps a lot too, knowing how to handle situations that might come on and off of the field court or whatever playing service they play on. Of course, what was that like getting to cover the iFart radio high school games? So that was just simply, uh, I was in school and someone recommended, hey, you have a little bit of free time. Let's go do some high school football. It was every either Friday or possibly Saturday afternoons. You know what? I had the free time. It was lots of fun to be able to experience some things and just adds a little bit more to just the resume, what it truly really comes down to it. I enjoyed the time doing that. Got to see a bunch of different things that you normally wouldn't see. What was that transition like from going from covering college announcing to then getting into professional announcing? So I was actually doing both at the same time, whatever I was in school. So I started with the Wheeling Nailers when I was a junior in college and I was continuing to do both. So I was going back and forth on weekends trying to figure out all right, like I could do this game this weekend and can just continue to go back and forth. But the transition, it's a little bit different. And when you look at college athletes, you know, you're more asking like a favor if you want to talk to them as an interview, as a professional, that's part of their job. They might not think it is, but it's part of their job to help us because all we're trying to do is get their name out there and continue to help them grow as a person and grow as a professional career. Of course, what was that feeling like getting to become the TV radio announcer for Wheeling Nellers. So it, it was a great experience. You no know, hometown team, this is where I'm from. So it's really cool to be able to see that. And right now being the number two announcer behind someone that's been here for over 900 games now is, is really cool. Get a lot to learn while I'm here, while getting to do some of my own things as well. So I was definitely super excited. You get to hear the jump and you go, wow, I get to go from the college to pro. Even though it's minor league hockey, it's still professional hockey. Everyone gets paid to do this. Of course, how has that helped, obviously, as you said, being the number two versus being the number one and getting started? So I think it was a huge part because I think there, I owe a whole lot of credit to DJ Abasilla, who's the play-by-play guy here in Wheeling right now, uh, just giving me the reins, showing me a couple of different things, how to handle certain things. Because here in the ECHL level, there's it's not just you show up to the game and that's your job. There's a lot of behind the scenes, whether it's working in the community to help get the team's name out there, talking to different media outlets, setting up interviews. There's a whole lot that goes behind it that you don't really realize. And he's done a great job showing me what I need to do. And and I feel like, and he feels like as well, that I'm ready to make that next jump up. But I think it's important to have a little bit of experience just sitting back, watching, and then being ready to go and jump and do it. What are some of your roles and responsibility as the TV slash radio announcer? 
So obviously I do color commentary for the games and occasional play-by-play whenever uh, DJ gives me the opportunity to, which I'm always appreciative of. But I also work here helping with him with community stuff, whether that's whether organizations ask for donations of tickets, whether that's going out and going to these events and just helping put them on with some of the players. And I also in arena before games to host a little bit of a pregame show that I write and go through, just give everyone with us, they come into the arena, a little bit of an idea of what's going on and what matchups going to be like. Of course, on a typical game day, what is that like being the TV announcer versus being the radio announcer where obviously with TV, they can see the action versus on radio, you might have to explain it a little bit more. Yeah, there's definitely a difference when it comes to a different way of how you go to broadcast it. So on the road, it's mostly the games are just radio. And it's a little bit different because sometimes there's, at least here at home in the ECHL, the games are simulcasted. So you're either calling it on the radio and on a stream as well. So you have to kind of play a little bit of both sides of it. Like You don't want to be over explaining everything for everyone that's watching it, but you also don't want to under explain it for the people that are listening on the radio. So as you said, if you're watching it on TV, it's more of just letting the play breathe, let it go through, let everyone watch it and then chime in here and there. And then on radio, you got to be on it. You got to have everything down and got to have, that's where you get to have those fun explanations of what the players are doing in different words. Of course, as a TV and radio announcer, what is that home game atmosphere like for you as an announcer? Oh, it's, it's spectacular. Whenever we have those big nights and there's tons of fans in the arena, you just feel the energy. And sometimes it's a great thing to just, even during the national anthem, just take a second, take a deep breath, and just look around you and soak it all in to see how many people are there. We had a sellout earlier this year in January, and it was the first one in since 2016, I believe. And it was really, really cool to look around and see how many people were in the arena. Of course, what is that home game atmosphere like and getting to feed off of that home game atmosphere? It's really cool to play off of the energy too because you can sense when moments are big when it comes to it, even though we know they're big already, but it's nice to know that everyone else knows it's big too. Being able to experience a couple playoff games last year, you can really, really tell when you could, when they say you can cut the tension with a knife, you really can. Of course, what are some of your famous calls that you've called? I don't know about famous, but I have a, a couple of things from when I did West Liberty basketball that I liked. Uh, I think my favorite one had to be whenever we had a, a dunk. I really, it was funny how I came up with it. I was writing something for a class that had a rhyme and I liked it. I was like, oh, I could really use that. It's a lookout below whenever someone goes up for a dunk. And that's probably one of my favorite ones I got to use. Of course, how has that been like obviously getting to cover, let's say basketball, but now covering hockey? Yeah, it's it's all it's different, but it's the same at the same time. It's just terminology can be different, and some of the things overlap that you might not think. So sometimes in hockey, if there's a four on four, the defensive coverage is going to be, you know, it's going to be like a man to man. So and you can relate to that back to basketball. And sometimes it's making those connections between multiple sports you might be able to explain it for someone a little bit better that might be watching or listening somewhere else. Of course, for the Wheelers, Nellers, what are some of your famous catchphrases that you've used so far? Oh, I don't know about if I have a ton of catchphrases. Just go and basically just having fun. There might be a couple here and there that people might have picked up on. Not really sure. What does a typical game day look like for you, and how long is your duration of preparing? So I feel like this is the answer that almost everyone gives as a an broadcast for one way or another but we're always preparing whether we think it or not just reading and reading and reading stats i mean i'm a big stat guy when it comes to it i like reading through the the league stat that comes with us and just finding different connections looking at the players bit oh he went to this school he was a teammate of someone that played in our team or i know who this person is they used to play here so we're always preparing but like game days as you said it's i'll normally come into the office and i'll come in and start getting my pregame show notes put together. If not, if I don't do that the day before, going through looking up stats, figuring out, okay, how can we write a narrative going to this game to get people excited? Go down, record that, write it around morning skate. It's getting about to wrap up, maybe look a little bit at the opposing team's morning skate, talk to some of their people there around, and then basically go back up, continue to write game notes, continue to do research up until 
about three hours before the game. I'll go back down to the rink, set up in the broadcast booth, start to test everything, talk to the opposing broadcaster and have a nice fun conversation. And then all of a sudden it's game time. It's time to get down and ready to roll. Of course, what does a typical game day look like for you? And how long is the duration from the tip off when the ice hits the puck versus the ending? So it depends. Obviously, basketball, a little bit more quicker of a game. Might be around an hour and a half, stretching maybe longer to two hours. And I might be overshooting it there. But for hockey, it's about two, two and a half hours. And, you know, we have fortune that we have the intermission breaks, but we're not done when the intermissions come on. There's content that needs to be filled there. That's one of the other things that I also help out here with as well is figuring out what content we're going to put in the middle of the intermissions. So it's a full work from when the puck hits the ice to the end of the game to the final horn sounds. What are some of your favorite calls that you've called so far? So it's been really cool to be fortunate to be a part of whenever I was up at West Liberty to have them in Division Two. It's a really big deal. It's like the final four in Division One to go to the Elite Eight. I was fortunate to be able to call them to go to the Elite Eight and winning a Sweet 16 game. But I think the favorite one so far has to be a goalie fight that we had here in Wheeling. It was something totally out of the blue. You weren't expecting it and it happened and doesn't happen very often. So that was lots of fun. Of course, what does that intro sound like when you announce the team coming out of the locker room? It's, it's the, if you haven't looked it up, you need to go through and look up the Wheeling Nailers goal horn. It might be the loudest in the league. So at that point, you basically you feel like your brain's rattling around your head whenever that goes off, but it's iconic. I wouldn't change that for any reason, and it's nice to see everyone when as soon as they come out of the tunnel before the games, you know that you know. In my feeling, it's all right. It's time to get ready to go. It's really exciting, and it's the same for the fans as well. What are some of the things that you've learned now that you didn't know before getting started? Oh, I would say first thing is you have to have fun with it. If you're not having fun, then you shouldn't be here and you need to find something else to do. If sports is such a great thing and there's so much parody when it comes to it, it's so much fun. So first thing, got to have fun with it. Uh, second thing is, you know, the center of attention is not on the broadcaster. That's the one thing. I, if anything, if I could slide off into the background, I'd be perfectly happy with that. Uh, you want everyone's there to watch the game. They're not there to listen to me. And that's as soon as you realize that, and you realize that even if you make small mistakes, if you just correct yourself and move on, it's the most professional thing you can do. And, and one thing I've learned recently, which I really, really appreciate is letting the play, the play breathe, whatever it comes to it. If a big play happens as Vin Scully did it very good. Kenny Albert does it well really right now too, is if a goal is scored or a home runs hit, just lay out, give it 15, 20, 30 seconds, and don't say anything. Let the crowd react. Do you want the people that are watching or listening to feel like they're there in the arena or the ballpark? Who are some of the broadcasters that you look up to and for inspiration? So I really, really like uh, Joe Davis. I was fortunate to be able to talk to him a little bit while back on the phone to basically ask him some advice. And I was only had that opportunity because of uh, – uh, ESPN college basketball broadcaster, Rich Hollenberg. He has been truly helpful to me as well, being able to help me with just looking at my reel or just looking at giving great advice because most of these play people have been in the same position that young broadcasters are in, trying to break into the industry. Of course, for you being a hockey broadcaster, who are some of the hockey NHL broadcasters that you look up to, whether it's voicers, whether it's the voice or play by place. So uh, number one has to be Doc Emmerich. If if you like hockey and it's not Doc Emmerich, I don't know what you're watching, but Doc Emmerich is one of the best. And some of the other ones I like, I really like Brennan Burke because really been looking at him. He's the voice of the Islanders, but also does stuff for TNT and TBS here during the playoffs. It's really cool to look at him because he was a former Wheeling Nailer broadcaster as well at a very, very young age to be able to see how you can rise from this level which it might feel like you might never get out of, but you know, it's still a good time when you're here too, to be able to get that rise up to the big stage. I really like watching him as well. And another one of those that rose here from Wheeling to work their way up is Dave Gosher, who used to be in Boston, who's now out in Vegas with the Golden Knights. What are some of your future plans in the sports broadcasting industry? 
right now, just continue to do what I'm doing right now. Eventually, the next goal was to get a number one job somewhere and continue to build from there and just continue to climb the ladder. That's all you can do. You get, no one knows where you're going to end up in 10 years when it comes to being a sports broadcaster, but you hope you can continue to climb the ladder and continue to do the things we love. What advice would you give those people that are looking to get into sports broadcasting? Uh, just got to get reps. You got to go out and just do it. Even if you're not doing some official broadcast, even if you're sitting at home. I mean, I remember when I was in high school and I just thought this is what I might want to do. I'd be playing something on PlayStation or Xbox. It'd be a sports game. And you just got to act like you're calling it. You go through and get reps, record yourself. Even if you're just watching a game on TV, record yourself, go back and listen to it and be like, okay, I can get better at this. And eventually just get your foot in the door somewhere. You have to say yes. What advice would you have those people that are looking to get into professional sports as a broadcaster? Uh, just kind of the same thing. You got to get reps and you just got to get your foot in the door somewhere. If someone needs to give you an opportunity, as soon as they're able to give you an opportunity, you got to prove why you deserve to be there. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Willard Nailers? So you can follow me on all platforms. So my name is Isaac Basinger again. It's going to be I underscore Basinger on Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn, Isaac Basinger. It's the same thing on Facebook, I believe. I believe that's all that I'm on. And the Wheeling Nailers, it's different across the thing, but it's a verified account across all of them. So normally it's around at Wheeling Nailers. Thank you again, Isaiah ba Basinger, for your interview. And best of luck in your future as the TV slash radio and now sports broadcaster for the Wheeling Nailers. Thank you, Brandon, very much. I appreciate you reaching out to me to have me on, and best of luck with your show here as well. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk and Scorpion. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Isaiah Basinger, for your interview, and best of luck in your future. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.